Hi, I'm Greg Levine, and this is the Party Line for July 1st, 2011. And I want to talk this week about the, uh, the dick move at the White House press conference. Now, now you notice, you notice what I did there. Um, note to Mark, your father used to be so smart. What happened? Alperin. Uh, I said dick move. I did not say dick. I criticized the act, not the actor. Something you can pick up from, I hear, child rearing. Also good in political commentary. Probably not good on television when you telegraph it to show that it's some sort of premeditated shock moment as opposed to, you know, actual heartfelt analysis, which is what theoretically Mark Alpern was being paid for. That said, there was a dick move during the press conference. Not the one Mark Halperin was probably talking about. He was kind of upset that the president indicated, and I'm using indicated in that directorial term, you know, in other words, showing uh, an emotion as opposed to really feeling an emotion. Uh, the president indicated a degree of annoyance with Republicans who uh, perhaps not negotiating in good faith on uh, the debt ceiling. Uh, and, you know, I should probably put in a caveat there, too, because negotiating is not really what they're doing at all. I mean, it's even gotten to the point where uh, Dick Durbin and Chuck Schumer feel it's okay to say that they are uh, actively trying to tank the economy, which is exactly what the Republicans more or less are trying to do within limits so that they can play this debate to their electoral advantage. That's not a surprise. The surprise, of course, is that... Uh, the White House has shocked the likes of uh, Mr. Halpern uh, by uh, showing a little bit of annoyance with that. The sh bigger shock, really, though, is is that the White House still thinks it has a way to play this, uh, to negotiate. And, and uh, this gets me back to the, uh, the dick move, which is not the indicating, but the actions. Uh, the, uh, the idea that... Um, First and foremost, you set up a, a framework where you tell America that there is negotiating to be done, which takes Chuck Schumer's argument off the table, really, and neutralizes it, because Chuck Schumer is indicating that, and I'm saying indicating now in the other way, indicating that uh, you can't really negotiate with these people, and the White House is saying, here, I'm engaging in a negotiation. See, rational guys, you and me, hail fellow, well met. We can talk this one out, right? Uh, the other problem, of course, is is the things that, that uh, the president has put on the table, which indeed include um, Medicare cuts um, and spending cuts in general, domestic spending cuts in general, in exchange for what, frankly, are the most ridiculous and piddly of, uh, I don't even want to call them tax hikes. They're like closing loophole stuff. Not really serious talk about adjusting the, uh, the income tax so that once again uh, is a, a progressive instrument for funding the great things that a, a federal government can do when it actually wants to govern. Uh, so, so again, so where are we now? We've got, we've got a president who um, has, on the one hand, um, undermined Senator Schumer and members of Congress who are trying to set up a situation that says if and when, and looking a lot more likely when we hit that debt ceiling sometime in early August and we still don't have a deal, uh, America can look at the Republicans and blame them for, for the train wreck that, that might ensue. Uh, so, so the president is, is neutralizing that argument. The Democrats have also been spending, congressional Democrats that is, spending a lot of time since uh, November of 2010 on the uh, whole structuring the, uh, the next campaign around the idea that Republicans are really the ones who want to uh, hurt your Medicare and your Social Security. And when the president says, I'm here to even put that on the table, um, he's inoculating the Republicans uh, from, from that argument, too, because they won't be the only ones who, who are, are tinkering with, with people's Medicare. And, and you know that once uh, the Republican gets, uh, once the, the 
president gets on board, no matter what the Republicans actually say or do or what was in the Paul Ryan budget, once the president gets on board, they're, they're going to hit him with that because they hit him with that in the last election. It's really not hard to, to intuit that. Uh, so, so the president actively undermining uh, congressional Democrats' uh, negotiating strategy and campaign strategy. Uh, and um, by the way, when um, Chuck Schumer appearing supposedly was news, uh, on uh, Countdown on Thursday night said that uh, Medicare benefits and Medicaid benefits were off the table, and then Keith Olbermann repeated it as Medicare was off the table, uh, obviously inaccurate, because it's very important to note when they say benefits, they're talking about the strictest sort of definition of that, and they don't think that, say, changing the age limit or means testing are tinkering with benefits because there'll still be a certain segment that will get the same benefits they're getting today. So not really off the table either. But no political argument because of the dick move from the White House. And if this all sounds sort of familiar, it should because this president, this Democratic president, is already gearing up for his re-election and he's gearing up in a way that reminds me a lot of the last Democratic president, who uh, also sort of screwed with the Democrats in Congress, their majority at the time, uh, negotiating uh, again on, on some social safety net programs so that he could look like the reasonable uh, hands across the aisle, bridging the gap, uh, conservative, fiscally minded uh, Democrat when it came time for him to run. However, it completely undermined, took the legs out from under the campaigns of, of Democrats, and we know what happened. And need I remind you what happened? Uh, the Democrats lost control of Congress, lost the House for 12 years, uh, thanks to the coattail free reelection of Bill Clinton. And the coattail free presidency is back. Not really a surprise considering the number of Clinton staffers in this current White House, but perhaps a surprise given the sort of uh, sense of a, of a movement that we got in 2008. That, that's gone. What we've got now is a man, a man who wants to be reelected, who wants to cement his place in history strictly as a guy who served two terms, as best I could tell, and whatever else he gets seems to be about the process and not about the product. And of course that is a dick move. And the party line. I'll see you next week.